Hey, this is Gary Berger from Berger Law. How is everybody today on this beautiful uh, Friday, May 8th, 2020? We're here for our weekly Ask a Lawyer show, and um, I'm excited to, uh, to do it again and to sit and answer everybody's questions. We had quite a, a show last week with everybody asking great questions, a lot of COVID or, or quarantine related questions, a lot of different types of, but, but some, um, but some curveballs as well from out, out of the field too. I have a couple questions. I know a friend of mine has a, been asking me, um, and, uh, it's related to an area of litigation that we're, we're pursuing and, and helping folks on because apparently this is happening a lot. Um, Burger Law has long done, uh, insurance denial claims. When insurance companies um, deny a claim after someone's paid premiums for years in a K for a certain type of coverage, an insurance company can deny it either because they say the um, the loss is not covered in the first instance, or they assert that it's subject to some exception. I've done different lectures on this, done different podcasts on it. My co-host, uh, I do a podcast called Lawyer versus Lawyer with uh, another lawyer named Debbie Champion, friend of mine. And, um, and we did one as on insurance denials and how, uh, how, that, how insurance companies do that. Insurance companies actually, there are entire lawyers and law firms that actually just do um, coverage interpretation, whether a certain loss is covered by an insurance company. And I don't want to lose viewers by talking about insurance losses out of the box. But here's an interesting here's an interesting claim. Should insurance companies have to cover uh, business interruption insurance for businesses? So if you are a restaurant or a or a business and your business is closed because of the uh, pandemic, should you have coverage under your business uh, business interruption insurance? The answer is absolutely yes. So most companies, you're going to have a commercial liability policy. Under that policy, you're going to have coverage for um, if your business is operated. What if there's a fire? What if there's a flood? What if um, what if something happens um, to your business? And then, so what, what happens under those policies is you pay for coverage to provide you your business income during those periods when you're unable to earn it. And you pay for premiums for that, and those that's part of your policy. Um, so um, the key language in the business interruption insurance often is whether or not the loss was uh, uh, occasioned by um, a physical damage or loss, or physical damage or loss being the key language in that. Um, so what insurance companies say, no, there's no physical damage or loss. This is a national pandemic. And in fact, your restaurant's closed or you can't run your car dealership or your insurance agency is out of business or you name it, the ice cream shop, the, uh, the uh, nursery, the every business is, is out of business. The um, um, many businesses are. We aren't. Burger Law is. We're able to work from home, thank God. We're able to file things electronically, et cetera. But what if you're closed and you lost all your business? There's so many people out of work. Uh, this is the biggest unemployment uh, uh, episode or uh, number of unemployed jobless claims since the, um, since the Great Depression. Um, and we have friends, we have all kinds of friends who are losing jobs or not able to work their second or third job or really losing money here. So, and those employers sh should be able to make a business interruption claim. Their business was interrupted. They had a business income loss. But all these claims are being denied. Um, and all these claims are, they're being denied en masse. And, and, and Burger Law has been asked to represent a number of area businesses for that. If anybody needs help or questions answered on that, give us a call. So they will deny those claims. I even have friends who have, um, who have had additional riders on their policies at providing coverage for communicable disease coverage. What if you're a what if you're a restaurant and you have um, what if you're a restaurant and you have a um, a uh, some type of a uh, you get some type of an infection there you get some food poisoning incident or something like that you should have coverage for that the same is true with COVID nineteen 
that's a communicable disease coverage. What about government action coverage? What if a gov what if the government is going to come in and um, and use the use a takings clause? They have the right to do it under the takings law, and they're going to take an entire three blocks for a development or something. You have government action coverage to cover your business income, where the government might not pay for that. They'll pay for the value of their property, but if you're making income from that, they won't pay that. That's 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 government action coverage. Well, there's government action here. The city in the St. Louis City, St. Louis County, Illinois, all over the place. And and I noticed Umi before I keep going. Umi just asked a question where I got this sweet haircut. So let me take a break from insurance law and just talk about this sweet haircut that I got. You may have noticed how long my hair was before or my weird crazy cut. So what I elected to do was take my shaver and shave my head. I used a number six. So I call this the number six. Um, it's very fancy, very high end. Both me and my two-year-old, almost two-year-old son, William, did it. He actually did it with me. I, you know what? I'll post a video on the Burger Law page later of him actually doing the cutting. I always have my kids cut my hair or make them do it when they're young enough to make, when I can make them do that. Cor uh, insurance companies are denying these claims. I often say that insurance companies are in the business of collecting premiums and denying claims. That's what they're about. And they do it all the time. So what we do, we've done it for decades now, is we sue the insurance company for declaratory judgment action, asking the court to declare and say there is insurance coverage and to do my claim. How do you make that claim? First of all, if you're a business, you want to do three things. One, make sure you know your policy, get your policy, look at it. Number two, file a proof of loss or a claim. Proof of loss or claim. Those are two ways to say it. You file those with the court, uh, excuse me, you file those with your insurance company, and then three, you're going to get a denial letter, a denial or reservation of rights letter. So you're going to get that denial letter. Email me, Gary at BurgerLaw.com, scan and send them to me. We'll look at the case for free and we will let you know whether we're able to take your case. If your policy has the key language in it, oh, they're going to, um, we'll take that case. You won't, you won't pay us until we win your case. And that's how we, um, if that's how we, that's how we run those. Uh, so if you're a business and you have a business interruption claim, call us. Um, Danielle Pauly, if your parent, if your parent dies from a coronavirus in a nursing home, who's liable? Danielle, I am so sorry for your loss. If that has occurred to you, I am so sorry. I have represented families of people who've died in nursing homes for a long time now and under very different ver various circumstances we have a number of cases pending now and it's such a sad tragedy so um, as I mentioned uh, maybe before um, uh, on a different uh, version of this we are we are accepting claims and looking at claims for families who have lost loved lo loved ones in nursing homes because of a corona uh, infection a COVID-19 infection um, and it's not uh, nursing homes that you know the the, the Nurses and doctors are on the front lines fighting this thing, and we respect them and we support them 100%. Let's be crystal clear about that. However, there are bad actors in nursing homes. There's nursing homes that understaff. There's nursing homes that don't test their employees for fevers and making sure that they're socially distancing when they're going to go care for your loved ones. There's nursing homes that don't pay enough to have adequate staff. If you've ever been in a nursing home, I'm, I've had so many clients they don't overstaff, they understaff. And there's a lot of complaints about that, I get it. So uh, nursing homes have to have adequate staff to adequately clean, disinfect. If someone, if one person gets an infection, they have to be vigilant about that. Then they have to isolate them and socially distance them. Some of these stories coming out of these nursing homes are terrible. Um, you have, you, there's, there's some nursing homes where you have a 20% of the residents have passed, not just gotten COVID, but passed away because of COVID-19. So those you can tell are nursing homes that aren't following these regulations. Nursing homes already had requirements to protect um, their guests, their patients from getting infections, whether it's the flu, whether it's a sepsis infection, a common infection. These are the, they're, they're in the business of caring for people that are high risk for those. This is nothing new. The standard of care for them, which uh, that they should they should uh, uh, with which they should abide, has not um, has not uh, uh, has not um, 
Sorry, I'm reading questions there. The, the standard of care hasn't changed. It's been there forever, just like they have to protect people from everybody catching the flu or these other illnesses and infections. There was, a, um, there was an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in nursing homes in Illinois last year. The state of Illinois is paying on now. The standard of care is clear. If nursing homes aren't violating it, then if nursing homes are not following that standard of care, they're liable. If they are, great, and that you don't have a case against them. But if they are, then you're not going to have a lot of COVID cases cases at those. So that's your answer on nursing homes. Call us at 866-599-2222. Email us at gary at burgerlaw.com. We'll look at your case for free. Um, let me go up to some other questions I'm seeing through here. Um, I already answered Umi's question about my sweet haircut. I talked about that if you haven't, dude. This is called a number six, and I actually get over a trash can, and I cut my hair, and it all came off. I'm going to put, Umi, I'm going to send you a video of that. We're going to put that up on the Burger Law website. Uh, you can see my two-year-old cutting my hair, and then I cut his hair, and now he's scared about it. He's like going around. So we watch this movie called The Trolls. We've seen it like a thousand times. And he says the Bergens are coming to get him. And so now he's saying the Bergens are cutting his hair and his hair hurts and stuff. So I finally cut his hair. He's going to look terrible for his two-year-old birthday in about two weeks. Actually, it's a pretty sweet cut. I'll put a picture of that too. Brennan. Brennan always has the good questions. Brennan, if I get a settlement for a slip and fall, do I have to spend the money on more treatment? The answer is no. Whoops, I lost my comments. Sorry there, Brennan. Or can I... Go to Vegas and put it all on red. Go to Vegas, but play blackjack. Uh, or craps are the better odds. Don't put it all on. Don't do the roulette. You don't, if you, if you settle a case, if we settle a case for you, and when I tell this to all my clients, first of all, the money is tax-free to you. You don't even have to put it on your tax return. So you don't have to put it on your tax return. The money is tax-free to you. Use it as you will. Now, don't go to Vegas. That was a joke. Because what happens in an injury case is many of our clients, their lives are turned upside down. And when they, are, when they do have a recovery, it's for past and future pain and suffering, medical, all that stuff. So save the money for the future because if you're in a car wreck and we get you $100,000, for instance, as an example, um, the net amount in your pocket after a fee and after a reasonable attorney's fee and after you're paying your medical is that's got to last you for the rest of your life for that. I was in a deposition this morning with a client who was in a tractor trailer car wreck and um, she's still got problems. She'll have problems for the rest of your life and she's a young lady. Um, so we have, you know, these problems are going to last you forever. So you want to make the money last you forever too. Now you don't have to spend it on any medical. You're not required to do anything, but I have, all, I have long talks with my clients about saving it for a rainy day, buying that first house, giving themselves financial security. Not only do our clients have this um, pain and suffering and this, real, this hit on them, but it's a financial hit too. And it takes a while to dig out from that. So clients who are you know, living paycheck to paycheck, you miss, th you miss two months of work, it really sets you back. So use, these, use this money to build wealth in your life and, and to be smart about it. Um, Jen Thompson asks me, are legislators doing anything to change the rules about business interruption insurance? Yes, um, they are. Um, uh, they are. So interestingly, so there's a law that says there's, there's, a, there's something in the Constitution that says that Congress cannot pass ex, ex po facto laws. So you can't go after the fact and say, you should have paid something. So if you and I, if, excuse me, let me give a better example. I can't read. I'm old. Jen Thompson. Jen, if you and I, if you and I, um, uh, uh, if you and I enter into agreement, the Congress can't two years later come back and say that I have to pay you or you have to pay me. That's unfair. That's an ex post facto law. Or you can't go back in time and say a crime should have had more uh, punishment than it does. So you can't go backwards. It's a fundamental unfairness. But what they are doing, and they're talking about in some states, is they're saying that the terms physical damage or loss, um, these are not bunny ears, these are quotes, that term means something in a state. That means, that means it includes a pandemic, communicable diseases, that means it includes, in, includes the COVID-19 pandemic. So what they're trying, some states, some good states are trying to say, listen, you went and paid your premiums, this weird thing happened that it's the type of thing you insure for. That's why we pay insurance, why we spread risk 
among all our citizens to do so. So, so uh, they say that means this. So they're trying to do it in a smart way to not to violate the ex post facto's laws, the uh, uh, constitutional restrictions against that. However, still trying to say, to weigh in the way legislatures can and say, because you got to remember, Insurance is regulated by the states. The states decide insurance questions. There's a Missouri and Illinois and every other state director of insurance. You can Google them right now. They have a web a page on the on the mo.gov website and they regulate insurance. They say what premiums can be. They have regulations about how to adjust claims. They they let they say who can insure in our state and who can't because you don't want people to collect premiums and then leave abscond and not pay because that's fraud. Um, they can they don't want insurance companies um, jerking people around and being too onerous, all right? They regulate what insurance policies can say and what they can't say. They say what minimum coverages there can be in, in, in auto insurance and other things. They're, so insurance is a highly regulated industry. It's a, it, it's, it, it, it works ta in tandem with governments, and governments are entitled to say under certain circumstances what that means. So I encourage the state of Missouri and, and Illinois and all our states to say that, to to have a definitional um, uh, regulation change or statute change that says physical damage or loss includes the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I have some other questions. I have Gail Bell, and I'm going to come back to David's question. Gail Bell, my work comp doctor told me that work comp reported they seen a Facebook post of me changing a transmission which in fact, it was my dad and his Facebook. He's a senior, I'm a junior. So the doctor said basically he can't see me anymore. Well, Gail, you need to file a claim for compensation and you need to get a lawyer like me to help you. So what can happen is sometimes people do fake or exaggerate injuries. There are examples of that in the world, right? And so if on Facebook or somewhere else they see or think they see that you're faking it, making up stuff, that they can deny your claim or a doctor may deny your claim for compensation. However, if you can, I would tell the, I would, you should probably have a work comp case manager, call her up, tell her what the deal is. Tell her it was not me, it was my dad, I'm really hurt, it wasn't me, I'm a junior, this was a senior, you got it all mixed up. Do it in writing as well as calling them up. Send them an email, tell them that. Give them some time to reinstate your benefits and get you that. And next, make a demand for medical treatment. A demand for medical treatment. It's that, literally say that, I demand you make a medical, medical you provide me medical treatment. That's a provision under the Missouri and Illinois and all other states work comp laws that if, that if a work comp insurer or an employer denies coverage or denies a medical, then you make a demand on it and they got to pay you. And if they don't, they can suffer the consequences. And then if that doesn't work, call a lawyer and file a hardship. Uh, a hardship is where you're telling the, the administrative law judge that you have a hardship uh, that, the, that, that the denial of medical or TTD or other benefits is placing you in a hardship and they got to uh, act right and fly straight. David asks, what about a truck crash that happens across state lines? Truck was from Wisconsin, accident happened in Missouri, where would this be filed? The answer is either. So... Um, you can file in either place. Most laws and most lawyers file the claim where the accident occurred. So if it's an out-of-state truck driver driving across the country or north or south or wherever, and, they, and they, they break the rules of the road and they hurt or kill someone, they've, they've agreed, impliedly, they've agreed under the long-arm statute of most states. It's called a long-arm statute. I don't want to get too deep in law, but they've agreed to jurisdiction and be liable in court there. And a jury in that area, in Warren County, Franklin County, Jefferson County, St. Louis, City, wherever, county, wherever, jury's going to be uh, um, uh, receptive to that claim because we all, you know, we all drive in our neighborhoods and we see these tractor trailers come through. Some of them are great. Some of them are very responsible drivers. I represent, I've represented many truck drivers. Some of them aren't. Some of them break the rules of the road and injure, needlessly injure or kill people. Now, when that happens, you call a, law, a truck accident lawyer like me, and then we file a lawsuit typically here and typically where the accident happens, the locus of where the accident happens. Now, you can also 
go to there and file it there because you have also have jurisdiction in the residence residence or the place where that truck company resides. Now, sometimes alerts, but that that may be deceiving. You may have a hub where they they garage a bunch of tractor trailers in Wisconsin pursuant to your question, David, but it's really a Delaware corporation with their principal place of business in Georgia or something. The other thing though is you don't want to go all the way, you, you want to be careful going all the way to where they reside because then you get hometown. So you don't want to go to up to file a case in Wisconsin where that trucking company employs 70% of the people in that county, they're not going to give you a fair shake. And they're gonna they're gonna side with the trucking company, so you got to be careful with that. But technically, both tip you could venue is both, but typically you do it uh, you do it uh, where the accident happens. Um, Davy asks me. Um, I already did Danielle's question, and, and Danielle, I'm happy to talk to you again about your sad circumstance. Gary at BurgerLaw.com is my email. Davey asks, COVID in the court system, are we really using Zoom for juries and other things? Is this a good thing? So, great question. So, actually, today, the federal court, I made a note, the federal court in St. Louis and around, around the state, and I think around the country, just stopped all jury trials, extended it through the middle of July, July 5th or July 3rd. I saw it come through in my email. Um, states, if you go to the Missouri Supreme Court website or Illinois St Supreme Court website, they'll give you the latest orders. Yes, you'd use Zoom for depositions and whatnot, not for juries yet because jury trials are canceled. But there is an administrative order by the, by the Supreme Courts of both Missouri and Illinois that says that the other party can't object to a notice of deposition by Zoom. They have to honor that. So um, that's happening. So you can't object to a Zoom deposition. I have conducted Zoom depositions. I have conducted Zoom mediations. I did a Zoom podcast, my Lawyer versus Lawyer podcast, the two most recent episodes of the podcast. Uh, my co-host and I did by Zoom, and we videoed it and put it up. So Zoom, there's a lot of things that you can do by Zoom. It can be very effective. You also lose some stuff, right? So you're not there with the person. You don't see some of the innuendo. You know, um, they say... Uh, 80% of what commun is communicated is visual, not auditory. So, and people watch witnesses. I've had, I've put a lot of witnesses on the stand. These jurors sit there and watch people's body language, the demeanor, what they're doing when they're not on the stand. Jurors are very perceptive and they get what's going on in a courtroom and around a courtroom and they can well assess that. That's why we have a right to trial by jury. It's the seventh amendment to the United States Constitution. So, I don't think, Davey, that you could make someone do a Zoom jury trial. Uh, I think it would run afoul of the Seventh Amendment to our Constitution. And there's a Missouri and an Illinois equivalent, too, the right to trial by jury, not to right to trial by Zoom. Because how do you know who's paying attention? How do you know if they block their, mute their video? How do you know if someone's asleep? And how do you know if someone didn't go to the bathroom? You heard this week the, the United States Supreme Court did oral arguments by telephone, and they um, and someone flushed the toilet on the uh, on the on the audio. So I don't know if it was one of the seven justices or whether it was one of the other parties or whoever it was. Um, I did an argument myself to the Missouri Supreme Court by Zoom. It wasn't Zoom; it was um, uh, the other one uh, owned by Cisco. Um, and I put it on my computer, and now every time I, I open up my computer, it like automatically starts going. So um, uh, it was by, uh, I forget the other, the other ve venue here for a second. I'm mind blanking on it. So anyway, I don't think we're going to have trials by Zoom, jury Zoom. But you know what? If this thing goes on for five more years, we're going to have to because we have criminal cases and civil cases and disputes that need to be resolved by juries. Um, next question. There you go, Umi. Thank you. You're welcome. Adam Houston, I psyched myself up. You only remove... Adam tried a haircut with uh, clippers. You just got to dig in there. 
Ah, uh, thank you. Well, no, you just got to dig in there. Just you got to go back and forth. So the te you can't just go one way on the clippers because it won't get it all. And especially if you're using a longer one like a six. Now, if you go to a four or a two, then you're really going to do it. And I have other friends in the military. I know Jason Stein watched a number of these. I saw him watch, and he was a uh, um, David. I, I mean, Jason. I forget if you were. Uh, West Point or the Naval Academy. And then my friend Grant Doty, I know he was at West Point. Um, so, um, and Jason, I'm sorry, I don't remember that, but it's been 30 years ago. I don't remember exactly. I'll look it up on Facebook. It, um, those guys, those military guys really know how to do it. You got to go back and you got to go back and forth and you got to, don't be afraid to take divots out of your hair. It'll all, it'll all work out at the end. Just keep going. You got to go crossways in different angles and stuff and you'll get it all. Um, so you'll be able to do it. Aaron Wilson, how are you, sir? Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Umi, ask the question. Are there times when you don't need to call a lawyer, a fender bender, something like that? Yeah. So Umi, if, and Umi, you know, Umi is uh, great. She, and, she interviewed me for a, a video radio show that, that we did with her, and she asked great questions. I really enjoyed doing that. Umi, we have to do another one of those. Um, yeah, if you're injured in a car wreck and you have one ER visit, don't call a lawyer. Don't call me. Call the insurance company and say, hey, give me $1,000 plus my ER bill and call it a day. So there are cases where lawyers can add value to the case and there are cases where we cannot. So if you're not seriously injured, don't call me. Um, if you're not, if you have an ER visit or an ER visit and a little bit more or something, you don't need a, me or a lawyer like me. You can call up and hopefully resolve it yourself. Um, uh, and sh that it's, you'll put more money in your pocket that way. So I will only take cases where I can add value to a case. Um, where my services and, and, and what I do will put more money in my client's pocket, even with my reasonable fee. Um, I'd like to announce to our, our winner of our... So we do something this week, and I, I sorry I took so long. I like to do it in the first 15 minutes. It's now been 28 minutes in. We, we have a giveaway we do every week at this time to give a $150 gift certificate to uh, through Instacart to one of our uh, friends, our Facebook friends of, of Burger Law. And, t and this week's um, goes to, is it Jason Dixon, Umi? I, I can't read my phone uh, and this one, but, but, but uh, Mr. Dixon, you did it um, and uh, you won and uh, uh, Umi, if you could put in a comment that name again, if you're still watching, if I didn't bore you with all my insurance talk and the close way that my head's up on that screen, if I didn't bore you already, Umi, if you're still on there, put that up in a comment so I can get the name right, would you please? Thank you, Umi. So, um, Davis Harper writes, I might need help versus Walmart. Davis, David Harper, I've, we, I literally am filing suit in, in Walmart in Illinois right now. Uh, my great lawyer at my office, Genevieve, and I were working on a, on a complaint. Um, we do it all the time. Walmart, there's a lot of great Walmarts. They can be a responsible company. They've also hurt small town America uh, and driven a lot of people out of business too, and they don't pay their workers well. That's my editorializing. We have to sue them all the time because they won't, like, they won't give you security tape. They make you file suit. They're, they, they hire good lawyers. We fight their good lawyers all the time. But... Um, so if you need help at Walmart, put it, fill out our contact form on our website. Our main intake person is Tiffany. She'll help you out um, or on any of our other, other intake staff. We'll get the information. We'll let you know if it's the kind of case we can help out. You know, we never just go sue Walmart. You'd never just go sue Walmart or something. You know, Walmart has to break the rules. They have to be negligent to their guests, their customers, in order to make them liable in a case. So, for instance, if Walmart has a dangerous condition of the property, if they should have been mopping up something and they didn't, if they didn't put out rugs when people are coming in and out, there's a host of things Walmart can do. They can hire more people and they can make it safer as well. Congrats, Jason. Jason Dixon, congratulations on winning our, thank you, Umi, Jason Dixon. Uh, won our Instacart giveaway. Jason, message us your 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 uh, 
uh, your zip code. We need your zip code for a $150 Instacart give, giveaway. You know, I started this Instacart giveaway. Uh, me, Umi, and David Cly uh, had this idea to start giving back to people. We decided to do it. Uh, I was just going to do it for a couple times. I'm going to keep doing it. That People need help getting food into their homes, and we're going to keep doing it until uh, uh, for the foreseeable future. Even if I, even if these, these Ask a Lawyer shows end up being born and people don't want to watch them anymore, we're going to still do that. Um, Brennan asks, what do authors get wrong about lawyers and scenes in court? I'm thinking Michael Connolly. Um, so they, one of the things they, um, they get wrong in court is it's never... In 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 TV shows or or I got another question from Rodney. So in TV shows and movies, which I think is what you're asking, Brennan, they make things so simple. So you get some brilliant cross examination. They immediately show a a witness to be a liar. And that's a lot harder to do than you think. You know, no light from heaven shines down and says, hey, um, this, person's a, this person's a liar. So it's a lot harder to show someone's making up stuff in court. Uh, court takes a lot longer. You know, they boil down a trial in law and order to like, you know, 14 minutes or something. That light is really weird. I'm trying to move it around to change it up a little bit. But I'm under light going too much. So they do that. Um, they make it. They make it easier and quicker. It's a little laborious. So you may sit through a whole day of testimony, and you may only have like three or four aha moments. But when I try cases, I try to make them simple. I try to make them try to make them interesting. I try to keep it moving and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what I try to do. So that's the difference. It's longer. It's more boring. It's not synthesized like in a movie. Um, you don't have judges weighing in like in front of juries. Judges are referees. They don't play the game. So you wouldn't go to a hockey game and have the referee start playing with the puck or something like that. Judges don't do that. Good judges, they call balls and strikes, but they don't get in there and try to hit. Not to mix my meta my sports metaphors. Judges don't get as involved. Um, in, in real life, the lawyers are a lot better looking than on TV, right? Ha, <laughs> ha. I'm no Joe Pesci, right? Um, so um, uh, it, it, there's a lot of work. So by the time you go to a trial in a case, you're not out gallivanting around, living the high life. You're sitting there working through depots and documents and getting everything ready. So because you need to, you need to do well for your client. It's a very time intensive activity trying cases, uh, but I love it. That's what we do, uh, Rodney. Um, a software where you're a software you're required to download for a Supreme Court argument causes a data loss with material damages. Can you sue the Missouri Supreme Court? Rodney, did that happen to you? Um, the answer is probably no. So there's something called judicial immunity. Judges and courts get a wide degree of immunity. They don't want every, everybody, because judges make decisions that greatly impact people, both their liberty, liberty and their money on a regular basis. And, and courts aren't, our constitutions, both state and federal, aren't going to open up our courts to liability for those things. So they don't. They say you cannot sue a judge or a court for those things. So they have a wide, they have a wide amount of, um, liability. And then I don't know why the download would cause a data loss unless there was someone hacking it. And usually what the, what the Supreme Court would do, Rodney, is they would, um, they would have an outside vendor. So they'd have Zoom or they'd have Cisco or someone else be the, that would be the liable party. So what you do when you have a entity with immunity, you try to sue the entity that doesn't have immunity so you can get a recovery. So Rodney, I would recommend you sue Cisco or Zoom or whoever else did that if you're able to find that. Um, so there, we have another question from Adam about a foster parent. Drive around all day to appointments. Oh, Adam, you're a foster parent. Good for you. You're doing God's work, my friend. Let me get, let me, I got to click on this and see the rest of your question. Um, 
So if you get in an accident doing that, there is no work comp against the foster system because you're not their employee. So I don't think if you got that, you would have that, you, you would be able to make a work comp claim. However, if you're in an auto accident and you're doing your work for your, as a foster parent, which again, God bless you, um, then you would, you could have a claim against the guy who hit you, the person, the at fault driver, you should do that. Um, uh, but there's no general guaranteed recovery like work comp for the foster care system. Maybe there should be. There is a, a tort victims compensation fund. There's other ways to do it. If that ever happens to you, call us up and we'll help you out. Uh, uh, we're, we're happy to do it. Uh, WebEx, that's what I did. Alon Elena Hare, Alona, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name very well. Um, you... Uh, that's what I used when I used the Supreme Court uses WebEx. I think the state of Missouri uses WebEx. I think when they started that, they thought there would be less hacking ability. I think the stories about Zoom getting hacked and that kind of stuff are exaggerated. I don't find a problem with that. I use it. I found it. I find it very usable. I do like it. Uh, but I think when some of this was happening, there was some fear of that. And so I know some institutions, federal and state institutions, use WebEx instead. Um, thank you, David, for the com comment. Laura Verharst, how are you doing, Laura? It's great to see. Oh, I'm asking, Rodney's asking because the comp the stuff that down opens up when I download on my computer. I think that's just a, um, hey, Tom, hey, Howard. I think that's just something that I'm, I'm, I should know, Rod. I need to go into the settings and address that. So final question, what is a family member? Like if Uncle Bob gets hit and put into a hospital, can I sue or is it more complicated? Well, so if Uncle Bob gets hit and put into a hospital, he has the claim. You, you do not have the claim. So even if a person is incapacitated, they have the claim. Your uncle or aunt has the claim. Now, if they're so incapacitated that they cannot act on themselves by themselves, you file what's called a conservatorship in probate court, which is a separate action where you get the court to say, hey, I'm going to have a nephew Brennan do the stuff for Uncle Bob, and then nephew Brennan does and does that. You can also not do that and appoint something called a sometimes you could do a plaintiff ad litem if someone's deceased but the their incapacity or death is not related to the incident it's separate you can do that uh, you can have a, so a, so a claim doesn't necessarily die with the person um, uh, so it can survive in that way there's a variety of ways to do it a variety of ways to get around that problem um, Fam, so so I think that answers your question, Brenner. Good question. So yeah, if your mom, dad, uncle is hurt in an accident and incapacitated, that happens all the time. I talk to people in the hospitals all the time, and what I usually do is I just I use DocuSign. I get them to sign on their phone to hire me, and then we start. Um, all right, sorry. And the winner is Lisa Dixon, not Jason Dixon. Um, Rodney just told me I got a Dixon wrong but if there's a Jason Dixon on that list too and uh, we'll give we'll give out two this week if I got the first name wrong and if there is a if there is actually one uh, if there is actually two D Dixon so um, we we get hired by people in hospitals all the time it is their claim we usually do that by DocuSign they will hire us and do that and then we're able to work the claim for a while until they're out of the hospital and well, you know, knock on wood, there's my sound effect, my knocking on wood. Um, you know, they're out in a week, they're out in a couple of days, they're out in a week, there's no rush to that. Let's wait till they get good enough, physical enough that they can make their own decisions because, you know, Uncle Bob, Brennan may not want to give you any of that money for that settlement or that resolution. He may want to keep it himself. He may need it for all the damn medical bills because hospitals are expensive now. So. Um, so let's let the person who holds the claim, uh, we try to as much as we can, let the person who holds and owns that claim, who was injured, who suffered the personal injury. You know, there's a reason why they call it personal injury and not injury. It's a personal injury. 
It's personal to them. So um, let's, uh, let's let them recover for it. I'm going to um, uh, wrap this up pretty soon now. Um, uh, we're about, I usually do these for about 45 minutes unless there's continued good questions. Um, there are great questions today. I really appreciate everybody's interaction and vigilance with this. Um, uh, there's nothing new. I see another question. There's nothing new on the DOC suit. We're going to, you know, the case is pending before the Missouri Supreme Court. We're going to let them, let's see what they do. Um, and uh, that's it. So if anybody has any more questions after this, um, thanks, Rodney. That's what I just said. Excellent, Rodney. Uh, Rodney is, I'm so great to have Rodney working with us. He's been working with us for a long time now. Um, if anybody has any other questions or personal questions that were not asked, I answered one by an email to one of the people from last week privately. If you don't want to air your laundry too much out here, you want to ask a private question, we answer all questions for free. Email us. Uh, fill out our contact form on our website. We're always happy to help. Um, we do try to do these shows, though, because a lot of times I find that the question that one person has, everybody has. It's kind of like in the classroom, what they always say, you know. If you have one, if you're in class, if you have one, if you don't understand your teacher and you ask a question, odds are a lot of other people have the same question. They just don't want to raise their hand. That's one of the reasons why we do this, is everybody's got the same questions. Everybody learns from these shows and this stuff. It's hard to get free, and free, and nothing's free anymore. So we're trying to get free, uh, free advice on this show. Uh, and on this little Facebook uh, live thing we're doing. We're going to keep doing it. We'll see you next Friday, same time, 4 o'clock. Come back, tune in, see what else is ripe for the talking about. Today we talked about business interruption insurance claims and other new claims. We're going to have other new cool stuff next week. We'll also have another $150 giveaway on Instacart. See everybody next week, and everybody be safe out there. Everybody do social distancing, honor this. You know, the... The governor is letting this state open up and and we, everybody's going to follow suit, but that doesn't mean that we're nearly out of the woods. All these rules still apply, social distancing, PPE, personal protective um, stuff, and that kind of stuff. So keep in mind that. Be even more vigilant. Watch out for additional spikes in the incidence of COVID. Uh, and like they used to say on Hill Street Blues, and now I am dating myself. Y'all be 